So first of all, thank you for, for coming this morning. As I rightly pointed out, my name is Melanie Oldham. I'm founder and managing director of Bob's Business. Bob's Business is an online provider of information security awareness training. We work with a cross-section of organisations from local authority, retail, charitable organisations, uh, central government, to try and meet two requirements typically organisations have. One of those is for compliance, to make sure that they seem to be done, doing the right thing. And where we think we excel is actually behavioural change, actually getting people to understand. So that's what hopefully I'm going to try and convince you, you can do, and it's really simple to do. Not putting myself out of business, but what we do isn't difficult, it isn't complicated. So we all have one common weakness. What is that? Sorry? Okay, yeah. You've hit the nail on the head. It's us. We are the biggest weakness. And as some of the statistics that were brought up earlier by Mike, it depends on which report you have, um, but around 95% of security incidents are caused by human error. That's massive. It's huge. Um, I've got a, a varied background. Um, my sort of career background started in hospitality, uh, then went into event management, then into pro project management, and then into IT. I was sat amongst an IT team. Lovely bunch of people. But when I first got in there, God, did I feel out of my depth. People are my thing. I love people. But IT team, you're a little bit different. Um, and I was trying to, <laughs> over the last few years since I've been working in IT and working in information security, trying to work out what makes us so different. What makes end users slightly detached from, from the IT guys? And I think, to be honest with you, it all comes down to acronyms. I think you just use acronyms far too many. And I think that's what kind of discourages people slightly. Anyway, so back to the point of us. And because we are such a problem, and we are these frontline defenders, we can't, how do we go about fixing and patching and monitoring? It's all stuff you can do with technology, but you can't do with people, apparently. Otherwise, you know, why are we such a, a, an issue? And part of that is because of the makeup and the way that we're built up. We're all driven by emotional motivations. Okay, and it's working on those emotions. So it's coming away from the IT, the noughts and the ones, and actually saying, okay, how do we work with people? How do people communicate? In essence, that's pretty much, if you can nail that one, information security awareness and delivering that message is really, really simple. Okay, so why are we the weakest link? So we've said, yes, we are the issue, but what is it? What are the, what are the causes that stop us embracing what is, to the IT area, quite a simple thing to grasp? What is it that end users don't understand? or the reasons to why they are the weakest link. Any? I'll give you a couple. I don't have any time. I'm too busy. Okay? Which is great if, for example, we've just done um, a kind of uh, an awareness piece with a simulated uh, uh, fishing simulation and that led on to some more training. Um, and one of the things that came up on the social forums was is this an April Fool? I'm too busy for fools like this. I clicked on the link and I was led to some training. Um, I'm just too busy. But the posts went on. In the space of an hour, the posts that were on this social forum within this organisation were huge. So, and I thought initially it was like, oh no, this has not gone down well. But the people actually answered all the questions. Well, if you're too busy, why are you on this forum? Um, and we spend a lot of our time on social media. We managed to find time for LinkedIn. We managed to find time for Twitter. We managed to find time for Facebook. But apparently we're too busy to get and understand the principles of information security. So, I'm not interested. And I think this is probably down to those acronyms. It's a, I don't think they're not interested, I just don't think they understand. Okay, resistance change. People like things and the way that things are, are done. And if there's something that changes, they're a bit uncomfortable with that. That's just our human nature, is to be a little bit uncomfortable and a bit resistant to change. Me, it's not gonna happen to me. I've got no connection, I don't understand this. This is IT, that sits with those guys over there. It's, it's, it's not my job, their job is to fix and patch and make sure nothing comes through to me. Okay, is it possible to be too nice? It's going to be my question. Anybody? Is it, is it wrong to be too nice? Yeah, yeah. People generally don't do things because they want to cause harm. And that's the thing you need to understand with any awareness program that you're running, anything the way you're wanting to change behaviour, people don't do it generally to be, to be nasty. People want to do a good job and they want to please. Um, 
an example of people wanting to please and the ramifications of this I'll, I'll go into. But I was travelling down on the train um, to a conference. It had been a long week. I was very, very tired. I'd got a lot of work to do and it was getting towards the end of the day. And I thought, OK, I've got to get this work done before I see the client in the morning. And I sat down on a table and I got my work out. And a guy comes down and he sits down. And I'm like, I'm conscious that I'm taking up a bit too much space. So I kind of politely move and just like, oh, I'm just moving to the seat behind just so I've got a little bit of room. I don't want to disturb you and I've got some stuff I need to do, but please don't take it personally. I then sit there and the trolley woman comes bound, offering me tea or coffee, and I think, yeah, I love a cup of coffee. So she says, no problem, she makes me the coffee. Tells me it comes to me some extortionate amount. So I go to my wallet and I've not got any change. So I give her my card. Uh-uh, she says to me, there's a limit. You have to spend more. And I'm like, oh, I don't really want anything more. No, it's fine, don't worry, I can live without this coffee. So the guy that I just walked away from goes, it's okay, I'll get your coffee. Oh God, I feel this sinking feeling inside that I've just walked away from you, now you're offering me coffee. And I'm like, no, 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 please, you know, being polite, it's okay, I'm fine. He said, no, you want coffee, coffee you shall have. So he buys me a cup of coffee and he buys himself a glass of, a bottle of red wine because it's been a, a hard week for him. So on that, I can't sit there. I can't sit a row behind and ignore this guy. So I'm like, okay, I move my stuff. Thank you very much for the wine. And we get into conversation. You know, it's from, I come from up north, so I live in Yorkshire, so it's quite a trip down into the centre. So we've got a few hours to kill. And uh, over the course of this few hours, he says, oh, I've had a hard week and I need this glass of wine. I said, okay, so what is it that you're into? And he's like, Paul, by the way. Hi, Paul, nice to meet you. Um, he's like, oh, I'm in tax investigation and fraud. I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. I said, so you've had a busy week, has it been a big case? So he starts to tell me a little bit about the case. But then over the course of the next two hours, he tells me everything there is to know. So I have the story of his kids. I know he's got four kids. I know what roles they do in different jobs. He's very proud of them. He wants to talk to them, uh, talk about them. He wants to tell me how good they're doing. I know the story about his parents, where he comes from, where he lives, even down to his boss, how well he gets on with him. So we build up this little bit of rapport, and then he starts to tell me a little bit about the case he's working on. I'm like, oof, this is getting a little bit uncomfortable, um, given the nature of the work that I'm in. But it, it still makes for a good story. We're having a big, good bit of banter. And then he gets up and he says, I'm just going to the toilet. And he leaves for me, his laptop open, his phone open, his case notes. And I'm like, oh, somebody needs to tell this guy about security. But is he doing it because he's, you know, he's stupid, or is he thinking he actually trusts me? And the problem is, he actually trusts me. And my husband says, I've got one of those faces that, oh God, you can sit anywhere and somebody will talk to you. Whole journey. And that's generally what happens. But my point is, he wasn't meaning to be dangerous to his company. He wasn't wanting to possibly lose his job. He wasn't wanting to have some negative press in the post. He wasn't wanting any of that. He was just wanting somebody to connect with him. Somebody that he can talk to because what he'd been doing all week was a little bit lonely. And that's kind of how we all are. We kind of like something that takes us away from our day-to-day -day job and makes us feel just that little bit special. Okay. So, how do we go about changing that behaviour so people aren't quite so free with their information and so that they think a little bit more? To engage the disengaged and change those behaviours of those people that just need to be a little bit more savvy. Okay. Um, common misconception is that if you scare people, then they will understand. To a degree, that's kind of right. As a business owner, if somebody told me that I was going to lose my business, they could tell me how much money I was going to lose, the damage it was going to be, I'd instantly be, okay, that's behaviour I want to avoid. From an end user, they're a bit removed from it. They're not thinking figures. They don't understand. All the statistics that came up earlier in Mike's presentation, to be honest with you, they're probably thinking, it's a number. What does that actually mean to me? Yeah, nice, pretty graphs. <laughs> and that's about it. Um, so... They're, they're removed from it, um, and if you do it negatively, you're likely to get their back up. You're getting that resistance that you can't ever change. You know, if you're wanting to make a friend, the first thing you don't do is go up to, up to them and criticise them, pull them to pieces, and make them so that they make you feel, you know, awful. So you just don't, you just don't do it. Okay. So, so big so. Is anybody anti prezzy Do you feel like you're feeling a bit sway as I'm taking you all over the room? Apologies if, if you do. Okay, so how do we achieve positive change and deliver information that end users understand? And that's going back to my five key, key points, which is people power, simple, relevant, reinforcement, 
and make it engaging. Okay, that's, that's it really. So, oh, hang on, before, yeah, before I do, the thing to think about with any awareness training is think about product, okay? If you're bringing a product to market, you want that to have a good reception. You don't sell it with all its bells and whistles of what it can do. You sell those benefits to your customers, okay? So why would information security, it's a product that you're trying to develop, uh, an environment you're trying to develop in your organization, so think of it on a product basis. So by that, I mean market it, okay? You want to get positive attention to it. Create a brand if you need to. People warm and are receptive to brands. They identify them, they understand them, they want to know more about them. Um, with any good marketing plan, you, with any good marketing activity, you put in a plan. It's got to have what are your objectives that you're trying to achieve and how are you going to map out to achieve those objectives, yeah? Um, and making sure that when you set put a product to market, not every single customer is the same. They're all different and people are all different. And different things resonate with different people. You have different, um, I presume, different sales pitches for uh, local authority as you do for commercial clients. You have a different angle, a different way of approaching it. So with your information security, you need to think the same. You just need to think with that marketing and that sales, sales side of it. Okay, make it relevant, strip out all those acronyms, because to be fair, having gone through 27001, we've gone through a real process of, okay, so what is it the end users need to know? We've got our training product, so I'm, you know, I'd like to think that training is not an issue with my organisation, but one thing that I was really kind of keen to is linking those policies to that training, giving those policies to my end users and saying, okay, can this make you do the job and how does that relate to what you're doing? What behavioural change do you need to make? Um, make it emotional. Information security can so easily be turned into your personal lives and I think that's basically what was touched on earlier. I, I think with, um, with David's presentation there were so many things that he came out with that I just thought that, that's my presentation to a T. Um, provocative, I quite like that word and I thought that was quite, that was quite a good one. Um, and making it exciting and I think it's very much the same with information security, phishing, phishing attacks, it can all relate to what's happening in your home and if you can actually give people tips and guidance, advice on how to, what to look out on the threats that exist in their home, then it puts the link and the connection with the similar sort of emails that might be a threat to your business. So making sure that whenever you're writing any awareness materials or you're pushing anything out, just think, okay, Turn that on his head, what would my threat and my danger be at home and what would interest me? If it's my family, you mention the family. It's pulling those social circles and talking to the people and the people connection. Aligning it with values and what their beliefs are. Uh, as we touched on, people don't intend to cause harm. They don't intend to cause problems. They want to do things. As a general, they want to please you. Uh, people don't go to work and think, oh, to be honest with you, I want to hack somebody off today. It's a general rule. I don't think they do. I think they want to be seen to be doing a good job and they want to be um, acknowledged for doing a good job. Um, so making sure that when you're, you're develop a, developing a plan, always think about the person. Think about what actually makes them, them tick. Linking your values, um, individual values, with organisational values. Um, this comes back to having a goal. One of the biggest things in HR is that people need to understand where they fit, how they relate to where the organisation is going and that is how you'll get a loyal and dedicated employee and information security is exactly the same. You need to say to them this is how you fit, this is where, what we're working towards and how we're going to strive and achieve the goals together. So it's aligning those values. Okay, social proofing. Does anybody know what social proofing is? No, has anybody seen this, this clip before? Okay, um, it's basically replicating other people's behaviour and this comes into the power of the, of, the, of the people. I'll let you quickly watch this and... Uh... And you'll see how this man in the trench coat... <laughs> maintain his individuality but little by little he looks at his watch but he's really making an excuse for turning just a little bit more 
to the wall. Now we'll try it once again. Here's the candid subject. Here comes the candid camera staff, three of them at least. And uh, this man has apparently been in groups before. Stop that. Okay, this video goes on and it goes on about people don't want to feel uncomfortable. They don't want to be seen the odd one out. So with your campaigns, if you can embrace the wider audience and make everybody do the same, then they will all follow suit. Um, and that's about social proofing. So it's, it's about very much making sure everybody is coming from it. So that's why the senior management buy-in that everybody says you need. This is kind of why, because if people can see people doing it, they think, okay, Inside of me, I don't want to be that bit different. I don't want to be that little bit uncomfortable. And the lift scenario is a, an ideal one of people walking in, seeing that everybody else is doing something. They know that the way out is the way that everybody's turning against, but they still do it because they don't want to be seen to be, <clears throat> you know, difficult. One of the things we try to do within our, our courses and our awareness campaigns is do an element of kind of healthy competition. And Naming and shaming to a, day, to, to a degree is quite good, and also rewarding people. And those kind of, kind of things of having uh, inter, inter, internal, sorry, inter, interdepartmental competitions, try saying that one, inter, interdepartmental competitions is really good because people actually think, okay, everybody's doing it, I want to be involved. Okay, so just moving, moving on. Keep it simple. Again, we were talking about this, it's stripping out the unnecessary jargon. Make it short and bite-sized. If I had my way, 40 minutes is a bit too long for a presentation. I think we could have covered all this in 10 and then <laughs> walked away. This is the thing with, with information security. It really isn't difficult. If you think about all the controls that are in ISO 27001, PSN, whatever the standard might be, there's probably about five behavioral changes that you need to change. It's, you don't write your password down. You don't share it. You make it complex. To everything, there's three to five maximum. They're not difficult. They're not technical. They're not jargon related. Email phishing. It's a case of, have you checked the link? Do you know that individual? If you don't know that individual, you don't open that email. They're simple tips. They're not IT. So it's getting that as simple and making sure you know what behavioral change you're trying to change. It's a bit like people sort of, I don't know how to take this, might find this a little bit condescending, but it's a bit like kids. I've got two kids, uh, four, uh, four and six, and everything I do, I feel like I'm repeating myself on a continual, continual basis. But they get to that point now where Finn gets up, he cleans his teeth, he makes his bed. And why does he do that? Probably because for the last six years I have told him every single day, let's clean your teeth. And it's the same with behavioural change with employees. If you repeat something and you, you show that message as good behaviour, regular and often enough, then they will, will comply. Um, the fun fit theory. Um, has anybody seen, seen this video? Okay. So, in Sweden, uh, they did some, an experiment to try and get more people to use the stairs than were using the, the escalator. Um, oh, hang on one second. Before I do, has anybody any thoughts on how you can actually get more people to use stairs versus using an escalator? Turn the escalator off. Turn the escalator off, yeah, good. Another question, another, an answer to this was move the escalator. If you move the escalator somewhere else, but then actually aren't you just kind of, <laughs> you're singling out those people that actually need that escalator. So, any other thoughts? Yeah. Sorry? Put it on backwards, yeah? Make people fitter, I like this one, this is good. This is not only actually make, changing people's behavior, but it's making them fitter in the process, and that's a good one. Okay, I'll just, any other thoughts? Reward, in, in what way? Uh, financial, emotional. Okay, uh, so we... So, a piece of chocolate or some money for 10,000 odd people a day. 
not quite sure how realistic and achievable it is, but it, it is along those ways. It's again, and it's going back to what makes us do something. So if I told you all, okay, the next person that asks me a question, I'm going to buy you an Easter egg. I'm sure I'd probably get a few more people thinking frantically now as to what questions, because you're kind of a little bit motivi motivated by something that you might receive. So anyway, this is... something okay I'm not saying that you can fit life-size pianos on all your stairs but it's how making something that's going to engage with people that they're going to feel is a little bit different can actually change behavior and this is known as the fun factor okay it's people say okay I'm working local authority we've got a lot of local authority clients and when we start with them and we present them with um, sorry it's 66 not 60 uh, when we start with local, author uh, local authority clients, we use animation as one of our key deliveries and they turn around and say, oh, that's not going to work in here. We're local authority. This is the way, way we do things. Again, similar central government. This is cartoons. This is not going to go down well. And initially, there's that resistance to change. But deep down inside, we're all kind of kids and we all like something a little bit different, something a little bit quirky, something that takes us out of ourselves and makes us feel that little bit special. Okay, so typically e-learning and e-learning tools are really, really unsuccessful when you implement them in an organisation. The uh, engagement rates of e-learning is usually between 8 and 10%, so that's really quite low. On average, all our courses re reach a sort of an 85% engagement level. And how do we achieve that? I think we've touched on it. I've not given you any examples, because if you want any, you can, you can contact me. But we use animation, we use humour scenario based, making it scenarios that people can relate to and using marketing campaigns. You plan it, it's got a start, it's got an end and you've got objectives and achievables and everybody in the organisation can see those plans. They're really easy to implement. It's no different from launching a product or implementing a bit of software. You've got a plan to what you're doing and how you're going to achieve it. And adding that element of competition. People love a bit of competition, me especially. Okay. So, enabling security awareness. This is changing what is splitting organisations. Instead of just achieving compliance, it's possible too, through increased engagement, that you can adopt best practices, you can get behavioural change, which means you can build that human firewall, and you can develop that secure organisation. Okay. So, if you want your employees to embrace, build a strong firewall, which is exactly what I said, communicate, explain, and make it attractive. Have I done that in my time? I so have. 11.40, brilliant.